In this video, we're going to look at converting fractions to decimals without a calculator. Let's start off with a fraction. So an example of a fraction might be one half. It could be three quarters. We might, for example, have three eighths. What I'm going to do is write the decimal equivalent. So here's our fraction on the left, and then we can have a decimal. Some of these we might already know. So for example, one half as a decimal is 0 0.5. A nice easy way to think about this, if you like, is to use money. I always take a pound and consider now what would happen if I had a pound. So if I had half of a pound, well, I'd have 50p. And we could write that as 0 0.50. Of course, we don't need the zero on here if we're writing a decimal, so we could simply write it as 0 0.5. If I think about three quarters of a pound, well, I could divide it by four, which would give me 25, and then multiply it by three, which would give me 75. So as a decimal, if we don't know that one, it's 0 0.75. So all I've done is divided one pound by four, which gives me 0 0.25, and multiplied by three. Let's say we didn't take that approach, and certainly for some harder examples, we wouldn't use that. What I'm going to do to now find the decimal equivalent of a fraction is to use short division. So using what you might have known as the bus stop method, we have the denominator, which is the bottom number, 4, on the outside, and the numerator, or the top number, 3, on the inside. I'm going to put 3.00. I can put a few zeros on here. I won't need them all, but in some cases we might. So the first question, does 4 go into 3? The answer is no, so we put a zero. I now ask myself, does four go into 30? The answer is it does. It's going to go in seven times, which is going to give me 28, and that will give me a remainder of two. I now ask myself, does four go into 20? The answer is yes, exactly five times, and we're finished. So all I've done here is used short division. So this is a skill that's on the website, or if you're unsure, uh, you can just practice a few of these with the skills that you already have, and you will come up with the decimal equivalent. So let's look at this one. If I think about this, I could divide a pound into eight, which would give me 12 and a half P, and then multiply it by three, but that's gonna get a little messy. So if you don't know this one here, and you don't, and that's quite fine. If you don't, you can simply use now the short division. So let's go ahead now and do three eighths. So eight, the denominator goes on the outside. Three, which is the numerator, goes on the inside. I'm using three in both of these. There's no particular reason. It's just examples that we've got. We could do five eighths if we really wanted here. Okay, so let's just load these up. So does 8 go into 3? The answer is no, so we put a 0. Does 8 go into 30? Well, it goes in 3 times. 3 times by 8 is going to give me 24, and that will leave me a remainder of 6. Does 8 go into 60? Well, 7 times by 8 is 56, so it's going to go in 7 times with a remainder of 4. Does 8 go into 40? The answer is yes, it does. It goes in exactly five times. So we can finish our division here, and we've got now 0 0.375. So that now is the decimal equivalent. Let's look at another one. Let's go for a different type of fraction. Let's go for four knives. So this one is what we call a terminating decimal. So it's simply now 0 0.375. So if I think about a pound, dividing it by nine isn't going to really be that uh, clean in terms of an answer. So I'm just simply going to use the short division. I don't recognize this, so I'm going to have nine on the outside, and then I'm going to have four on the inside. So 4.0000, and just continue those like so. So does 9 go into 4? The answer is no, so we put 0. Does it go into 40? Yes, it does. It goes in 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36, and we'd have a remainder of 4. Does 9 go into 40? Well, we've just seen that it does. It goes in 4 times, 
and it will have a remainder of four. Does four go into, uh, does nine go into 40? Yes, it does, four times, remainder four. What we can see here is that this pattern is going to repeat and it will go on and on and on and so on and so forth. So we can write this now as 0 0.4444 and continue, or we can write this now as a recurring decimal. And to do that, we simply write 0 0.4 and the little dot on the top. So this tells me now that we're going to get 0 0.4 and the 4 will be repeating. Let's go for another one. Let's go for 250. So this time our denominator has two digits. So I don't know what this is going to be and I'm not expected to really know. So all I'm going to do is simply set this up. So if we have now the 15 on the outside, that's the denominator, then we're going to have 2.00000 and so on and so forth. Does 15 go into 2? The answer is no, so we put the 0. Does it go into 20? Well, it's going to go in once, and we're going to have a remainder now of 5. Does 15 go into 50? The answer is yes, it does. It's going to go in 3 times, which is going to give me 45, and I have a remainder of 5. Does it go into 50? Yes, it will. 3 times, remainder 5. And again, we can see this pattern will continue. So we can now write this one as 0 0.13, and it's the 3 that's recurring. So the 1 isn't in the pattern, it's just the 3. So let's write it as 0 0.13 recurring. Let's finish with one more, and I think we will do two sevens. So let's do two sevens. So again, we wouldn't know what this is. 7 doesn't go into 100 exactly. So what we're going to have then is for 7 on the outside, we will have 2.000. And I'll put a few of these on as we may well need them. So we ask ourselves, does the 7 go into 2? The answer is no, it doesn't. So we put a 0. Does it go into 20? Yes, it does. It will go in twice, which will give me 14. So I put 2 here. And there's a remainder of 6. Does 7 go into 60? 8 times 7 is 56. It will go in 8, remainder 4. Does 7 go into 40? Yes, it does. It will be 5 times. And that's going to give me 35, remainder 5. Does 7 go into 50? 7, 7 to 49. So it will go in 7 times, remainder 1. Does 7 go into 10? Yes, it does. It will go in one time, and it will have a remainder of 3. Does it 7 go into 30? Yes, it does. It goes in four times, and we will have a remainder of 2. So, does 7 go into 20? Yes, it does. It goes in twice, and we will have a remainder of 6. Does it go into 60? Yes, it does. It goes in eight times and there's a remainder of four. What you might notice here is that this, again, is a recurring decimal. So if we look here, the two is going to start the pattern and we have the two just here and this will continue. So it's 0 0.285714, 285714 and so on and so forth. So we would simply write this now as 0 0.285714, and the pattern starts with the 2 and ends with the 4. So it's recurring with these six digits here. So there we go. That's some brief work working now with fractions to decimals and converting from one to the other.